Okay, we have talked about consumer surplus already. That's from a consumer's perspective. That is, and I, this is a little demand curve here, that's the area above the price below the utility um, that gives us the amount of the area at which consumers are coming out ahead. If price is P and, and quantity is Q and your Mars utility is P plus X, then all of this area becomes our consumer surplus. Um, all the area represents how much consumers are coming out ahead because they would pay more for this good than the actual price. So they're coming out ahead, right? It's like if you want to go see Star Wars, when Star Wars came out, right? When the last Star Wars came out, I would see 50 bucks to go watch that, right? My utility for that first time to see, um, you know, the Rise of Skywalker, I had to pay 50 bucks. To be fair, I paid 50 bucks easy. But the price is only $10. So everyone's price was 10 bucks. And maybe my wife, who hates Star Wars, she would pay $5 to go see it. So she wouldn't go see it. My son, right, was, yeah, I'll go see it, right? He, he'd had a smaller utility. So his consumer surplus was much different. I had 40 bucks for the consumer surplus, right? I paid 50 bucks for it, but it was only 10. So it's coming out 40 bucks ahead as a consumer. And you can see that in something like this. Well, the same thing also happens from the, from the production side, from the firm side, right? So here is a supply curve, right? We have our quantity, our price. Um, and let's say our price, our equal in price for this good is 10. Our equal in quantity for this good, sorry, our equal in price is five, sorry. Our equal in price is five and our equal in quantity is 10, okay? Now, firms produce goods and the price that they settle on is, is determined by the market. But how much that company makes is determined in terms of profit is determined by the cost of making the good. So let's say that this firm um, could, would actually sell the good for two bucks. There are some firms that could would actually allow their firm to sell this good at a price of two dollars, right? And there are some out there that need three dollars, some that would need four dollars, some that would need four fifty, and then seven five. So if I would sell my good for two bucks or for three dollars, right? If I'm selling something, I was going to sell for two, but now you're telling me I can get five for it you're pretty happy with that, right? Or, or if it's $3, you're $2 happy about that. If you would sell it for $4, but now the price is actually five, you are coming at ahead a dollar, right? We call that producer surplus. So if you would sell it for two and the price is five, you're coming out ahead three bucks, right? If, if this changes to four, then this changes to one. So much like consumer surplus, the area was here, in producer surplus, the entire area of the producer surplus is this area here. And again, um, normally in economics, um, supply curves kind of curve up like this, and if the price is here and the quantity is here, you're having to find an area that involves some curves, and it's, it's, much, more, uh, de it's much more sort of, um, labor intensive mathematically. Um, if we're just using linear curves, which serve the same purpose in terms of the idea of how the stuff works, then we can again just use one half base times height um, to figure out the area of this, of this uh, producer surplus, right, of this triangle. So in this case, it'd be one half, the base is 10, the height is five minus two, so three. So it'd be one half of 30. So the producer surplus would be uh, 15. So producer surplus is not the same as con con well, of consumer surplus. In fact, it's kind of like the opposite. It's how much producers are coming out ahead when the price is whatever the, the market price is. And again, uh, sort of like in consumer surplus, when the price changes, that also changes the quantity and it also changes the, the producer surplus. So for example, if the price goes up to seven, all of a sudden now you can see the producer surplus just got way bigger, right? Now the producer surplus is way bigger. If the price goes down to let's say $3, now all of a sudden you can see the producer surplus is way smaller. So when price changes, it changes producer surplus, but it also changes consumer surplus.
And so what Mark is trying to do, again, is figure out a way to maximize the welfare. The total welfare is the addition of consumer surplus plus producer surplus. And um, if we can, and I'll, I'll sort of show you that in a, in a full supply and demand graph, um, which we'll be getting to a little bit later in the unit, but if this is, um, right here is demand and here is supply, right? And then here's our price and here's our quantity. We'll call these equilibriums. This entire area is the consumer surplus. This entire area is the producer surplus. If the price goes up a little bit, we're going to have more producer surplus but less consumer surplus. But it will also affect when the price goes up, it's going to affect how much is going to be bought and sold. It could create uh, shortages, it creates surpluses, all these things that happen uh, when price changes. And what economists really want are for markets to find this equilibrium so the total welfare um, is maximized.